Suspect on the premises believed to be armed. Over. Get out! Get out! Smithy! You shouldn't have done that. Smithy! 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 Mum? Gina? You all right? Sergeant, get, get him to safety. Quick as a cat now, kids. You're safe. That's it. You're safe, sir. That's all right. Come on, quick as a cat. Excuse me. The policeman. Is it what happened? I think he's been shot. Miss Blake, do you want to take a head count? There are still two girls unaccounted for. Sir, those kids came from the art room. Do we know the names of the two hostages? Sophie Parry and uh, Polly Carr. Right, I want you to arrange statements from the kids and the teachers. When you're finished, I want you at the briefing, Sergeant. Sir? All right, you two. So, sir, sir, what have we got? Lone gunman, name of Jake Quinn. He's been stalking a woman called Nicola Parry. Looks like he's finally cracked. He's holding two teenage girls in a third-floor classroom. We've also got an officer in there, Sergeant Smith. We've lost contact with him. We're afraid he might have been shot. P.S. Hooper. Mum? You can go straight in to end this now. My advice would be to wait. Certainly until we get a better picture of the situation inside the classroom. I have to agree with him, Gina. But surely if we go in fast, there's an element of surprise, especially if one of my officers are injured there. Gina, Quinn knows we're here. It's too late to go in, all guns blazing. Now, can we set up that base inside? Yes, of course. Sarge, what's happened to Sergeant Smith? We don't know. Has he been shot? Like I said, we don't know, and we haven't got time to speculate. The students and teachers have all been evacuated to the church on the St Mary's. They're all going to need to be interviewed to find out if they saw or heard anything significant. So Tony, you and Ben do that now. We can release them afterwards, yeah? Yeah, sure. Aaron, just stay on the gate and make sure we don't get any rubberneckers or pressing it. A problem, PC gear? No, Sarge. Didn't think so. How are you feeling? Oh, I felt better. Not the right time for everyone to get laid low the stomach, but... Yeah, probably the best don't remind me. What's the news with Smithy? I wish I knew. Show me exactly where the classroom is. Uh, yes, it's on the second floor. Good to have you with us, Sergeant Weston. Thank you, sir. Heaton, how many ways are there? Uh, two staircases, here and here. Six classrooms connected by one door each to the central hall. So Quinn can move freely between all these classrooms? Yeah. All right, thanks. I'm afraid the nearest team of hostage negotiators is at least 45 minutes away. That's too long. We have to make contact with Quinn now. Well, I'm happy to sit in for a while, sir. I've acted and negotiated before. I'm not sure that's such a good idea, Gina. Why? We need somebody who can be objective. Given the situation with Sergeant Smith... I can do my job, sir. Nobody here is doubting that, Gina. I just think we need somebody who's not as close to one of the hostages as you are. Sir, I did do the hostage negotiators course a couple of years ago. Any practical experience? No, not in the field, sir, no. Do you think you're ready for this? Yes, I am. But I would like Inspector Gold present. She's the one with actual field experience. All right. Is that okay with you, Gina? Right. Now I'll have Sergeant Smith's radio put out of action. We'll make sure Quinn can't use his mobile phone to call out. The only people he can talk to will be us. The only person who can contact him will be Sergeant Stone. As Gold Commander, I'll set up my command center in the yard. Gina, as Silver Commander, you will work with Sergeant Stone and keep me informed of any developments in the negotiation, all right? Sergeant Weston, Sergeant Stone, you will both be Bronze Commanders along with P.S. Hooper. Sergeant Weston, I want you to work between the armed response units and the mobile command centre. Yes, sir. You sure you're well enough? I'll be fine, sir. Good. Now, we've practised many times for an incident like this. Let's make sure it goes as smoothly as we know it can and should. That's all. P.S. Hooper, Sergeant Weston, come with me. We need to establish where Quinn is, if there are any other hostages, and what's happened to Sergeant Smith. I'll get two teams, one into those staircases. I'll also put a couple of my men on that roof opposite. 
That should give us a good sight line into the classroom. Right, Sergeant Weston, use two of our officers to assist with the lockdown and support P.S. Hooper's team. Yes, sir. How soon do you need us? No time at the present. Okay. All right, remember to slowly build up a rapport with Quinn. Try and persuade him to let the girls out and let us in to see what's happened to Smithy. Everything else about the operation will be left to the super. Mom, did you want to speak to me? Yeah, I need you to take over from me and assist Sergeant Stone in the negotiation. Yes, Mum. Sally, we're going to use this as our situation report. But let's start with what we know about Quinn's history. Tony, how much longer before you finish at St Mary's? Another ten minutes or so, Sarge. We've got the parents of the missing girls arriving shortly. They'll need looking after. I'd like you to do that, please. No problem, Sarge. OK, first thing to say is we know Quinn is on. I'm going to need two people to go into the building with me and the armed officers to help lock it down and isolate the area Quinn is in. Ben, Aaron, thank you. I'd like to do it, Sarge, but Sarge will stand putting me at the gates. OK, um, can you swap with Aaron? Sarge. Thank you. The rest of you continue to help with the clearing houses in the outer cordon. Sarge. Thank you. Any more news on Sergeant Smith, Sarge? I'm afraid not, Ben. Yes, you, but this is PC Gale and Gear. They're going to be helping with the lockdown and they'll be at your disposal. OK, good. Right. We have to take this slowly and carefully. Once we fix Quinn's location, I'll want you two ready as backup. If Superintendent Heaton orders us in, you to wait for my all clear before following us, OK? Good. Ready? OK, you two are coming with me. You are going with Carl. Let's go. Given what we found out about Quinn, do we think he's capable of real harm? I think so, yeah. Well, we all know that Quinn had a history of harassing women in Australia, which is why he got deported. He was also prepared to stab himself to try and get Nicola Parry's husband put away. And do we think the gun he's got is the same gun that his father killed himself with? Never found the weapon. But Quinn was 15 when he witnessed his father's suicide. Maybe using the same gun is his way of regaining some control over his life. If the only thing in this world he wants or thinks he needs is Nicola Parry, he's not going to stop until he gets it. Bronze one from gold, understood. Bronze one from gold. Go ahead, Sergeant. We're in position, sir. Any sign of Quinn? Affirmative. Target is located and contained. What about Sergeant Smith? Negative, sir. Understood, Sergeant. Wait for my order before you proceed any further. Yes, sir. You OK? I think so, Sergeant. So just never been on a shout as big as this one before. Doing fine. So, we're ready here. Have you got the go-ahead to talk to Quinn? Go ahead, Gina. Thank you, sir. Sergeant Stone. 
I want to talk to Nicola. Okay, well, I'll, I'll see what I can do about that. That's going to take a while. In the meantime, is there anything that you need? Food, water? Nothing. Jake, are Sophie and Polly, are they okay? Can I send someone in to check them over? Anyone comes anywhere near this place and I'll do the same to them as I did to the cop. Is our officer hurt, Jake? Let's just say he got what was coming. Jake, I'm not sure I know what that means. It means I shot him. <clears throat> Jake, can I send a paramedic in to see him? It's too late for that. Don't call again until Nicola is ready to talk to me. Jake. Excuse me, I need to talk to the superintendent. Is she going to be all right? He said he shot him. And we have no reason whatsoever to believe a word that Quinn says. Gina, these are witness statements from all the hostages who got out. Not one of them saw Smithy get shot. It might have happened once they'd left the room, so that is meaningless. And if Smithy is alive and well, then why hasn't he got in touch? Mm. And now what are you supposed to do about Quinn's demands to speak to Mrs. Parry? I'm reluctant to involve a civilian in the situation. And given what Quinn's already put Nicola Parry through, I don't think she'll be able to go through with it. Well, he won't talk to anyone else, so what are we supposed to do? Refuse Quinn's demands and just sit and wait to see how he reacts? If Sergeant Stone wants to talk to her to see if he thinks she can be helpful, then he has my permission. But he has to be certain that it's worth the gamble. Thank you, sir. Let's leave the husband out of it. If Quinn gets any sign of his presence, it could antagonize an already volatile situation. Gina? We've been here before with officers going missing. Until we can find out exactly what's happened to Smithy, we have to hang on to whatever we can and try and stay positive. Right? So. Mark? News on Smithy? Nothing concrete. Well, that could be good news, though, couldn't it, Mark? Until we know for sure. Yeah. Yeah, Tony, you're right. All she had to do was listen to me. Just listen to what I had to say. Polly's not well. What is going on with her? She has asthma. Well, then, shouldn't she have an inhaler or something? It's in her coat in the cloakroom. I told you, we don't want water, we don't want pizza, we don't want a car to take us to the airport and a bag full of money. I just want Nicola, all right? Got it? I'm not stupid. I know what's going on here. Keep me talking, yeah, keep me occupied until someone pulls the trigger and then the inside of my head's all over the floor. Well, not today, guys. I know you've got her out there somewhere, so get her in here. All I want to do is look in her face and explain. Is that Sophie Parry's parents? Yes, Oz. I've also spoken to Polly Carr's mum and dad. They said that she suffers with acute asthma. She's been hospitalised over it a number of times. OK, I'll make sure that's passed on. Thanks, Tony. Mrs. Parry. Mrs. Parry, would you come with me, please? What's going on? Has Quinn hurt Sophie? We've no reason to believe he's hurt either of the girls. So what's this all about, then? I'm afraid all I can tell you is I've been asked to bring Mrs. Parry to see our inspector. Why didn't you people arrest this man when we told you he was crazy? Mr. Parry, we can't go around arresting people on Why your say-so. Why not? You arrested me. Tony, would you take Mr. Parry back, please? What do you mean, take me back? Wherever Nicola's going, I'm going as well. This isn't helping, Mr. Parry. I don't give a damn! Jared, please, just stop talking. As soon as I know what's going on, I'll let you know. All right. Silver from bronze too. I'm on my way over with Mrs. Carey, ma'am. I'll come out to meet you. In here. I've explained to Mrs. Parry Quinn's request. I see. How do you feel about speaking to Quinn? I'll do whatever it takes to get Sophie back. All right. Well, the danger is that you might antagonise him if you don't tell him everything he wants to hear. Then I'll tell him what he needs to hear. Look, I just want my daughter back. I know you do. And I know you'd do anything to get it back. But I have to be absolutely certain that you speaking to him is going to help us achieve that. Well, it will help. I know it. Quinn is very unstable. If we make a mistake here, it's highly unlikely we get a second chance. I'm the one he wants. Surely that gives me something to use against him. Something to bargain with. I don't care what lies I have to tell him. If it gets Sophie back, I'll do it. Right. Why do you want to talk to my mum? Because 
Sophie, I want to tell her that I love her, that I always have, and that I always will. You don't even know her. Of course I know her. Sophie, I'm, I'm sorry that I hit you, OK? I didn't mean to. But this is not your fault. It, it's got nothing to do with you. You shouldn't even be in here. But, uh, well, it's too late for that now. She will have the rest of her life to regret what she did to me. Quinn has to believe absolutely everything you tell him. If he thinks for a minute that you're stringing him along, this is over. I'm going to be sat here right next to you throughout the conversation. You wait for my signal before you respond to any of his questions. And you don't offer him anything without my say-so. And you make absolutely no promises unless I tell you to. Understand? I understand. OK. Let's do this. So, it's Gina. We're going ahead with using Nicola. Is there anything they need? Look, I don't want to talk about them, Nicola. You'll see them soon enough. How is Polly's asthma? Why are you asking me all these questions? This is my turn for you to answer my questions. Okay, Jake. I'm sorry. You're right. I want to know why you rejected me. I didn't mean to reject you. Why don't you come out and we can start again? Well, and if, sorry, when they, they, they put me in prison, you'll be there waiting for me? Of course. For how long? As long as it takes. Look, just let the girls out and, and we can be together. Put the cop on. Jake, this is Sergeant Stone. Why are you making her lie? Jake, she's not li <sighs> Silver from Bronze 3. Go ahead. You heard that? Quinn realised it was all a set-up. Uh, I'll let the superintendent know what's happened, but keep trying to get him back on the line. Mum. <sighs> it's all right. It's gonna be all right. It's Smithy. Mum, it's me. And where the hell have you been? Yeah, and I'm fine, thanks, Mum. Thanks for asking. Look, I need to keep this short because Quinn doesn't know I'm here. But he's moved the girls. To the next classroom. I think he's on an armed officer on one of the rooms opposite. Must be trying to keep out of sight. Smithy, it's good to have you back. You heard? No, sir. I'm fine, thanks. What about the girls? Well, Sophie's all right. And, you know, it's down to her that I've got my phone back, but... But it's the other one, Polly. I'm really worried about her. She's really starting to struggle to breathe. This is my fault, isn't it? Hi, this is Jake. No, this is Quinn's fault. And don't you forget that. He's going to pick up in a minute, Nicola. And when he does, you need to be focused. Because if he hears he's got you, then you'll have given him what he's always wanted since the first day he met you. Control. 
and you're not going to give him the satisfaction. Okay? Okay. Should we tell Sergeant Stone about Smithy? You know the procedure. The negotiator can't know too much about what's happening on the outside. Sergeant Stone and Nicola Parry have to focus solely on what Quinn's telling them. I know, I know. But don't we have a duty to tell her that her daughter is on her? We can't tell her, Gina. If Quinn found out what she knew, it wouldn't take him long to work out Smithy must have been the one who told us the information. This is Quinn's show. In his head, he's controlling things. We have to make sure he keeps believing that. Any more lies, Nicola, and I promise you now... I will kill Sophie, and that will be all your fault. Do you understand? I understand. Good. Then I'll ask you one more time. Why did you reject me? I was afraid. The way you made me feel, I, I knew it wasn't right. How could it not be right? I'm married, Jake. Well, yeah, but he doesn't love you the way that I do. I know that now. I just didn't understand what it felt like to be loved by someone so much. You know I've been unhappy in my marriage for so long. I'd forgotten what it feels like to truly care for someone else. And now you remember him. That's because of you, Jake. Get away from that door! Move! Get away! Sophie! Long time no see! Right, Sophie, Polly needs you to look after her, but I need you to stay calm for me, all right? We'll get you out of here. I promise. Look, Jake. But you need to stop this while you still can. Look at Polly, she can barely breathe. You just be quiet! Yeah. All right, I am trying to think. Yeah, OK, what are you saying? Somebody please tell Jared what's going on. Please get in contact with him. No, Nicola, we can't do that. We have to stay isolated in here, away from anything that might... What? Jake. Jake, what's happening in there? What's going on with Polly? Polly's fine. They both are. But I wish I could say the same thing about your officer. Sergeant Smith, isn't it? Well, I would put him on the phone to let you speak to him directly. But he's a bit tied up at the moment. Hey, Jake, how do I know you're not bluffing? An hour ago, you told me you'd shot him. I am tired of playing games. Where's Nicola? She's right here, and she'd like to speak to you too. No, 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 face to face. I need her in here with me. Jake, I'm afraid that's not going to be possible. OK, all right. Well, well, then maybe this will change your mind. Say something. Smithy. Smithy, you all right? Do whatever you need to do. That's enough. Are you satisfied? Right, if I don't get her in here right now, I will shoot him and then I will shoot a lot of us. And I promise you, I will do it. Gold Commander from Bronze 3. Eaton. I think you heard that, sir. I think he's OK. Yes, thank you, Sergeant. He made contact with us a few moments ago. Right, well... Seeing as he's holding him hostage and he's threatening to kill him unless we send Nicola in, what do we do next, sir? Try to make contact with him again. Find out how serious he is. So we can't send Nicola in? No, of course we can't. So what options do we have? Well, as far as I can see, we don't have any choice. We're going to have to go in. What's your assessment, Sergeant? Right now, going in is a high-risk move. I wouldn't advise him. Go on. Well, since Quinn's moved classroom, we can't see him. On top of that, we've got three hostages. We don't know their positions. For all we know, we could have a gun to one of their heads ready to fire the second we try and enter. Yeah, but you've got a really good idea of Quinn's intentions. The negotiations are at a standstill. How do we know he's not going to kill the hostages anyway? We don't. But I can tell you this, if we go in now, there will be casualties. Possibly among my men, almost certainly amongst the hostages. Well, that's a risk we might have to take at some point. But not yet. We have to give Sergeant Stone a bit more time to try to talk to Quinn. Maybe he can persuade him to let Polly out, or at the very least, receive some medical attention. Now that Polly needs medical attention, you've got to get Quinn to either let her out or let the paramedics in. Hello, Nicola? No, Jake, it's Sergeant Stone. I am only talking to Nicola. Jake. 
Jake. When are you coming in here? I'll come in as soon as you let the paramedics in to see Polly. Will you do that for me, Jake? Yeah, OK. Thank you, Jake. I'll call you back in a minute. Nicola, I specifically asked you not to make promises that we can't keep. I'm going to have to talk to the super. Mum. If it means Polly gets medical treatment, I don't care. You've just offered him too much. He's not going to forget that. If I have to go in there, I will. Sophie, good news. Your mum's coming in to see us. Sir, there was no way that Stone could have stopped Nicola from saying it. I understand that, but it puts us in an impossible situation. What now? Well, we have to get Polly out of there. That much is clear. What, and risk sending paramedics in? So, what if I go in and place one of the paramedics? I mean, Quinn's never seen me before, and I'm a fully trained first aider. I mean, if armed response do have to go in, I'll be able to tell them where the hostages are, what kind of gun he's got, what state he's in. Well, that's the best option so far. All right. When you go in, you get Polly and you get out of there. Do you understand? Yes, sir. Good. I think we've had enough heroics for one day. Sir, I'll go and talk to P.S. Hooper. Anna, do we let Stone know what we're planning? No. We stick to the procedure. We don't do or say anything that might let Quinn know what we're up to. Sir. You all right? Yes, ma'am. Remember, if anything goes wrong, P.S. Hooper and his men will be in within seconds. I'm hoping it won't come to that. If it does, I'll be fine, Mum. 686 from Silver. He's got guts, man. We're ready here. Has Quinn given permission for the paramedics to move in? Jake? Our paramedics are ready. Can they come in? Yeah, but tell them to walk slowly. And tell them to call out my name when they're outside the classroom. Jake Quinn? The paramedics. Okay, Polly. So, if you don't mind, we're just trying to do our jobs. Thank you. Do you want me to take a look at that for you? I'm fine. Oh, is wait, wait, move. He's fine. She can't stand here. What? What, she's gonna be okay? No. She's gonna need further medical treatment in a hospital. Right. Okay. Thank you. Come on, Come on. Come on. Nice deep breaths. Good girl. Right there, I've done my bit. Send Nicola in. Okay, hold on a minute, Jake. It's not that easy. What, what, what do you... Nicola said, if I let Polly out, she would come in. Are you saying she was lying? No, Jake, that wasn't a lie. Yeah, but these things do take time. Well, you got the paramedics in here quickly enough, didn't you? It's not as simple as that, Jake. We... we have to get permission from our borough commander... Before we can do something like this. I need you to give me assurances that if we send Nicola in there, you're not going to try to hurt her. Hurt her? I love her. Why would I hurt her? Jake. No, look. I kept my part of the bargain. Now you keep yours. You have got ten minutes to get her in here. Otherwise, I start shooting. And I will start with your sergeant first. And if you think I won't do it, trust me, I will. Because I shot the last man that came between me and the woman that I love. Sarge? He must be referring to the man who was suspected of shooting in Australia, but they were never able to prove it. Silver from Bronze Street. Sophie's here. Smithy's here. There's a lot of furniture in the way of a clean entry. Desks, chairs, they're all around here. Uh, the gun, it looks like an old army revolver. Any other weapons? No. 
And as for Quinn himself, I mean, he's jittery. He looks like he's lost a lot of blood from the wound to his side. That's right, Mum. Ten minutes. And you're sure he's serious? Given what Sally uncovered about the guy's history and what he just told us, it's really possible he's shot someone before. I wouldn't like to gamble on him not being serious, Mum. All right, I'll pass it on. Thank you. Well, it looks like Quinn has called our bluff. He's threatening to kill Sophie and Smithy and even himself if he doesn't get Nicola in there in approximately... approximately eight and a half minutes. Do you think he'll do it? Yes, I do, from what we know of him. I think he's prepared to die or kill to feed this obsession. Well, that's it, then. If he's expecting Nicola in the next eight minutes, we'd better surprise him by going in in four. Your men ready to go? Yes, sir. If Sergeant Stone can distract Quinn by giving him a call when my men are in position, that might give us a few valuable seconds we wouldn't otherwise have. Gina, I think it's time to let Sergeant Stone know the negotiations are over. Sergeant Weston, if you and your team can follow us in when my men give you the all clear. Of course. Let me know when you're in position. Sir. Uh, Hooper will call me the minute he's got the go-ahead from Superintendent Eaton. It's over to you. You're going to have to call Quinn and try and distract him the best you can. And if he doesn't pick up? Well, if he thinks he's going to see Nicola, I don't think he'd better help himself. Bronze four from bronze one, are you ready? We're ready. Goal from bronze one, sir, we are in position. Do we have permission to proceed? Stand by, bronze one. Silver from gold. Gina, is Sergeant Stone ready to engage Quinn? Silver to gold, yes, sir, we're ready. Go ahead and call Quinn. Is she coming in? Yes, sir. Nicholas on our way to see you right now. We managed to rush through the authorization that we needed. Bronze Commander One from Gold. That is a go. That's a go. Jake, I, I do need you to give me your word that you just want to speak to Nicola. As you can appreciate, this is quite a gamble for us. Oh, Sarge, uh, Sophie and her parents from this soft interview room. She's given us David to Sally. OK, thanks, Ben. I'll go and speak to them now. Do you know what time it was like that every day in my school? I hated school when I was a kid. Actually, maybe it was the other way around. You've got ten years on me, Smithy. And how's that? Nothing. Queen could have killed you. I thought I'd try the direct approach. Didn't get me very far, but... Well, without you, the whole thing could have got well out of control. You did very well. You were. What? Are you all right? Yeah, I'm fine. There's something I've got to do, so, um, go on. I'll meet you in the incident room. Just good days to go out and about with the troops, didn't I? Remind me not to do that again in a hurry. There have been easier days. Do you mind if I sit down? I need to talk to you about something. Go ahead. I don't think this is going to come as any surprise to you because you know it's been building for some time. Gina? I've made my decision, sir. I'm going. I'm listening. I don't want to wake up one day and realise that I've stayed too long. I've seen that happen so many times. We both have. Suddenly, you find yourself too old for anything else. I'm sorry, I just don't buy that. But that's all there is. Gina, if there's one person who you'd have to drag kicking and screaming out of this place, it's you. This job is your life. It was my life. 
You were amazing when Emma died. It hit all of us hard, the whole team. But we pulled together and we came through it, and that was in no small part down to you. It's not just about Emma. It's about Sally and Callum, Nellie drowning a couple of weeks ago. It's about all of them. And today, when I thought I'd lost Smithy, honestly, sir, my nerves can't take it anymore. That's the job, Gina. I know. And seeing their carriage when they go out time and time again makes me so proud. But every time it gets more and more terrifying. You know, you think the place will grind to a halt without you. And it won't. Okay. If you're sure. Thanks. Thanks very much, John. How's Polly? She's going to be in hospital for a few days. She was lucky they got her out there when they did. But you did well fighting for her. Should be proud of yourself. So you're finally going to lock him up and throw away the key? He'll have his injuries looked at by a doctor, then be assessed by a psychiatrist. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's typical, isn't it? He commits a crime, he threatens to kill my wife and daughter, and he ends up getting some cushy asylum in the countryside. So. We all done? Yeah, I've taken Sophie's statement, so we'll follow that up tomorrow. Apart from that, we're good. OK. I can't thank you enough for getting my daughter back, especially after I made a mess of things by saying I'd go in there with him. You've got nothing to reproach yourself for. It's thanks to you that Polly's safe. Well, thank you anyway. Can we maybe get you a taxi home? We're not going home. Not after everything that's happened there. We're going to go to my parents' house in Cornwall for a few weeks, aren't we, Seth? Yeah. Just the two of us. For now. And we'll be fine. I know you're not one for long, drawn-out goodbyes, but we still do have you for another month, don't we? Don't tell me you have quite a bit of leave, I mean. Almost six weeks. I'm sorry it's that short notice. That's an understatement. I have to find a replacement. I know, but you're spot for choice here. Three great sergeants to choose from. Though I'm not sure that Smithy would want it. He um, was acting as captain once. I really didn't like it. What about Sergeant Stone? Well, if he's given a choice, I think he'd rather be out there on the front line with the troops. I don't think he's ready to give that up just yet. Sergeant Weston? Yeah, I think she'd be great. It's a very hard decision to make. I'm really glad it's not me having to make it. So how soon are you thinking of leaving us? Don't shout at me. Tonight? Tonight? And if I could ask you another favour, if we could just keep this private. As you said, I really don't like long goodbyes. Thank you. Yeah. I think I might. I've sent us you did really well today. Yeah. yeah, you too. Just glad it turned out right in the end. Yeah, me too. Um, could I uh, have a word after me? Yeah, what about? Uh, after the meeting, yeah. All right, my office? Uh, a bit of hush, please. Right, I'm going to keep this short and to the point. It's been a long, hard day. And we'll be debriefing properly tomorrow. So right now, I just want to thank you for all your efforts today. You all have every right to be proud of yourselves. That's it. I told you I'll keep it short. Inspector? This might come as a bit of a shock to you. I've got no complaints. <laughs> Boss me. It's an honor to work with you today, as ever. OK. Sergeant Weston, do you have a moment? Of course, sir. You played a blind at the day, Mom. So did you, Tony, but then I've always relied on you. Only because I had the best governor there is. Always a pleasure to serve with you. Right. Take a seat. Can I get you a drink? Uh, no, thank you, sir. I've been watching your work. Really? Don't worry, it's not bad. In fact, I've been very impressed, especially today. Coming in when you were sick, 
The way you handled your team going in there with Quinn. Anyone would have done the same, sir. Yeah, I'm sure they would. Look, um, I'm not going to beat about the bush, and I do have to ask you to keep this to yourself, at least for tonight. Inspector Gold is going to be leaving us. I'm surprised. I, I mean, I, I thought she was happy here. Well, I don't think it's a question of unhappiness. The fact is, she's leaving with immediate effect, and I'd like to offer you the job. What about Smithy or Sergeant Stone? Shouldn't they be considered first? They have been considered, and I'm confident that either of them would do a great job, but that's not the issue. I brought you to Sun Hill because I'd heard nothing but good things about you. I had very high expectations, and I have to say they've been surpassed. I'm very flattered, sir. I want someone new, someone fresh, someone who can bring the energy and vision needed to move this station forward. I think you're that person. I'm not pretending it's going to be easy. They are very big shoes to fill. But I don't want to hurry you into making a decision. Why don't you sleep on it? I think I should, if that's right. Of course. We'll talk tomorrow. Uh, do you think I could have that drink now, sir? So it's true, then? Well, lots of things are true. I should be out with my feet up watching the telly and a stiff drink. That's true. Please tell me this isn't because of what I said that you should resign. Of course not. Because even the way things have been between us Everything's lately... Everything's fine. Uh, look, we both know that things have been difficult. What with all this stone stuff? You might not like it, Smithy, but he's a really good cop. Look... You know that I've always admired the way that you've done the job. And that you've always given it 100%. But you've been a really good friend to me, and that is what I'm going to miss the most. Well, I'm leaving the job. I'm not leaving my friends. Anyway, radar ears. How did you get to find out? Stampy opened his mouth. It's around the whole nick. I'll never keep a secret in this place. No. Oh. That's... Oh, no, no. Right. Me done. Oh. <laughs> Not a lot to show for 25 years, is it? There's plenty to show. Why now? No great mystery. The job's changed. I've done my bit time to move on, and I want... Don't you laugh now. I want to walk the length of England and Scotland in my own time. Stopping at every pub along the way, probably. Why today, though? Can we talk about this another time? Be up tomorrow for a drink or something. Cos right now I'm exhausted and I don't know how you're still standing up. I just want to slip away. I don't think that's going to happen. Tony's out there sorting out a whip round for a last minute leaving day. Oh, no. Can't you tell them that I've already gone? Because if I meet up with them, I'll never escape. They'll be disappointed. Yeah, well, I'll be seeing them again. Except this time I won't be shouting at them and giving them orders. Well, not in uniform, anyway. Good night, Mum.
time on the field. So we should formally welcome Inspector Weston into a new post. Oh. Go after her now. Angie, stop! Police! 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 